All right, ladies and gentlemen, this is Emmanuel Sales. My own composition. Give me that old New Orleans jazz. I was always fooling with the guitar, and uh, when we got on ramp on street, I uh, started just trying to make something sound like something. And he must have sneaked up on me and even saw me with it, you know. He said, do you like that? I said, yeah, but I don't know what I'm doing. He said, well, look, okay, I'm going to tell you. He said, tomorrow I'm going to get you, you and Joe and Pete. He said, I'm going to show you all three changes. He said, then I'm gonna, the next day I'm going to see who remembers. He said, now you can practice on the guitar during the day while I'm at work. So Joe and Pete fooled, but not too much. But I'd, I'd, man, I'd be practicing on that thing to remember what he told me, you know. So then he'd let the older brother start, you know, and he'd, he'd make a mistake. And, and that second older brother play, he'd make a mistake. And then he'd come to me. I'd remember just what he said, just what he taught me, see. And that's when he said, well... Uh, you, 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 you're going to be a musician, boy. But when I'm on the bandstand, I'm, as I'm supposed to be a musician, an entertainer, and I try to be in, the, in uh, a pleasant mood and try to do my best on my instrument and try to make that audience or those people out there dancing or those people listening to the music happy. But that's 100% of, of the job, being a musician. I'm the one in boy. Don't deny it by name. Oh, yes, by name. One in boy. Don't deny my name. Pick it up and shake it like sweet David chain. Because I'm the one in boy. Don't deny my name I said, Mama, Mama, Mama Mama, look at little sis Mama, Mama, Mama Mama, look at little sis Mama, look at sis Mama, mama, look at sis. Mama, she's out there on the lever doing the double twist. I'm the whining boy. Don't deny my name. I would say that among people, certainly, who are playing his inst instrument, that on a worldwide basis, Manny probably has more followers than anybody else because there's virtually no place you can go in the civilized world where you find anybody playing anything approaching jazz that doesn't know the name of Manny Sales. As far as jazz is concerned, the banjo is a fundamentally percussive instrument, and it is a part, literally, of the rhythm section. Now, what that means is, in fact, that transmuted from its African origin, that role is one where people sit around and clap their hands to make rhythm. And in this case, it also has the advantage of being able not only to clap, but to make chordal changes. And I had sense enough to know when I learned it. Uh, like I said, 
plus en âge. Continue sky school, my like, uh, daddy told me, he said, yeah, I got to get you in the post office. He had people, white people to go to. And I didn't want that. <laughs> I didn't want to be nothing but a musician. I can make it short and sweet to you, that. Because <laughs> you made more money and you, and you didn't work hard as a laboring guy. <laughs> First band I played with was, was, was guys, like I said, we, we were all going to the same professor. We used to call ourselves All Stars, but a lot of bands used that word All Stars, you see. But when we went to Pensacola, we were called that, and then the people started calling us the Pensacola Jazzers, you see, because we used to play Mobile, Montgomery, Pensacola. Thank you, sir. You know, we played Brooklyn Park in Mobile. That's right. The Brooklyn people Park. we had so many people there, preachers and, and Christian people. All kinds. That, that park was so full, and they had another band too. Too there, it was a tuxedo band. If I'm that was band, brass band. That's right. Uh, was there. And we had so many people there, we just broke a record there. Yeah. And the, the man we was playing for, you know, we did good. He bought all of us tuxedo suits. <laughs> well, there, there, there ain't nobody can tell me this place. I, I didn't see in some hard, hard time. And the, at that time, the most money I made, it was in Pensacola. Tell him what it was made. Do you remember? <laughs> no. Do you remember? No, I don't. I, I can't. Can tell you. We were working four days a week. Four days yeah, a week. I, I forgot how many days. And we were getting 24 hours. Yeah. I never did forget that. Go oh, saxophone, put something down. It's been pleasant, yeah. You play one of them, something. Yeah, I'm in bad fix, y'all. See me, I'm in a bad fix. I'm very sick. Oh, she sure look good. Yeah. Oh, the bucket got a hole in it. Oh, the bucket got a hole in it. Yeah, the bucket got a hole in it. Can't buy no get beer. Yes, me, my baby. Yes, we bought a seat for. Now we're sitting together on the running board. Keep a knocking, but you can't come in. Keep a knocking, but you can't come in. Keep a knocking, but you can't come in. Come back tomorrow night and try. Oh, the bucket got a hole in it. Yes, the bucket got a hole in it. 
Yeah, I was telling him about how the bulls used to have their parade once a year. Do you remember the carriage? You used to rent Joe yeah. Gettys carriage yeah, and all yeah, yeah. And then on a Monday night, Rene used to play there. Most of the band played there with Rene. Buddy P.T. too, yeah. Uh, yeah. And I was Papa telling about... Papa Seller Stan. Yeah, Papa Seller Stan. What's that, that hall back there on Howard Avenue? No, Howard Street. That was Sansu. That... Oh, oh seriously, that's what I couldn't think of that. Sansu, oh, yeah. Sansu. Well, that man had a pavilion out in Millenburg in the summertime. He used to yeah. run. I remember that man. Oh, yeah, Frank, I'm in 70 already. 71. 71. Oh, man, I thought you were really that much older than me. Can you take my two, Sansu? 71, and I just made it 70. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you see it. The women treat me nice, and I don't want yeah, to know it much. Yes, yeah, you see, man. Nice, <laughs> <laughs> look at that. He goes, man. He still got his technique. Oh, man. Oh, man. You remember Joe Bradford? Oh, yeah, man. Well, that's what he was doing there, watching yeah. man, about his time and soul. Oh, that's where I live with in Chicago. <laughs> yeah, give, give me that sign when you're through, you know. Huh? Give me that sign you give when you're through. Too soon you shine. All right. Too soon you shine. I don't know. All right. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> To eat more Draymond the bricklayer. <laughs> Emil Victoria, remember all of that? Oh, yeah. Arthur yeah. Devorney? Yeah, Devorney, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, 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 ye
manager was named Melvin Banks. Manuel Sales on guitar and John Creech on violin. Music is like this. You see a big wagon wheel? We put a spoke in for rock and roll, huh? We add another spoke for disco. We add another spoke. Well, now, wait a minute. We've got all these other spokes down here. Uh, Dixieland, blues, waltzes, Latin, rumbas, tangos. That's, that's Calypso. Yeah. yeah, Calypso. All of these things, that we put. we're adding another spoke in that wagon wheel. There's no music takes over. If it comes up, it's just something that's going to mean new. We just add that right in the spoke. All right. In the spoke of this wheel. Of uh, that wheel. I because like the, I like the way you decide. see. Because I ain't never even, I never even played that thing in 20 years. I'm a rock and roll. Lord have mercy. I never, I never get a chance to John, when I had, we could sit down, boy, you know what? If I could come down here sometime, just sit out, and you and I just get it in it, like we used to do, and just go through all of these things. All these things. This kind of, no, you know, he said excuses, he tickled me. He ain't trying to get an excuse. And he said, he just don't play nothing but yeah, like that Dixieland stuff. This guy can play anything. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I said it, but uh, yeah, what I'm doing, yeah. We play I, Holiday for Strain and all this. Yeah, I had this uh, pains going to the doctor. And I uh, took the medicine, and I knew I was doing what he, he told me. But I wasn't getting any better. It seemed as though then my whole inside starts to shake and n not do anything. I wasn't resting, so he, he said something was wrong, and that uh, the medicine should have done me good. So he said, well, how's you, how do you sleep? You, how's you sleep? I said, I don't. He said, well, what's the matter? So I said, well, my husband plays music all night. He's sleeping, and he's playing the banjo, and he's feeding. I'm going, and the bed is shaking. So. <laughs> he said, well, I tell you, he says, you have to move up. <laughs> that 
There we are. That's it. If you look at it, you see J Evangelist Sale. That's that's, that's 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 my sister. She died. Then my papa bought this 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 lot, and we kept it up. And the next is uh, Evangelist. That's my mother. And the next is George Sale. George Rene. See that's Rene's his middle name. See. And the way they put that stuff on there, they got it. I mean, you can hardly recognize it, right? But I can get somebody to come out here and, and put paint on those letters. You know anything about out here? In other words, no. I got where it's supposed to be at. Mm -hmm. The marking. Well, see, this would be C up in here, wouldn't it? What I done, I fixed up the wrong one the first time. You I kind of took me to the wrong one. Wait, what? You, you see what you mean? And I had to clean and yeah, you everything. Know, you, you, know, you, lost around money. you lost money. You lost money. And got to talking to my uncle, showing him what I had done after 20 years. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> shoot, shoot. I decided to clean it up after 20 years. And when they got to look, they said, well, no, she didn't die in 56. I mean, in 54. Well, she, she died brand, in 56. Because you must be coming from out of town, not brand new. Right. I was I, living in Houston. Yeah, I just come from a different brand of line going to, what the hell was it going to? And uh, I fixed the wrong one well, up, so now I come back to fix the right one. Well, well you got a problem in the Well, you got an idea where it is. All you got to right. do is I keep searching. 56 to 77, how many years is that? That's a lot of many, that's a many years. You mean that's what you got to touch in that grave? 56, it hadn't been nothing to it. They left the graveyard well, crying, and well, they haven't been back since. Well, I think everybody's afraid to die. Like, it's except that a few of some people have, uh, have, have a certain sickness, and they're suffering so much. I heard saying that people say they ask God to take them away. Well, you're not supposed to do that according to the religion. Are you scared of what's going to happen to you after you die? Or you trust something good's going to happen, or what? Oh, well, yeah, and if we're answering, and, and you're answering your question that way, you, 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 you're afraid to go to hell. I'm afraid to go to hell, I tell you that. You think you're going to make it? Well, that's, that's a question I don't think anybody can, can answer that, and I don't think so. You feel pretty you good. You might say it, but I mean, you don't know. I hope to go to heaven. I wish to go. I try to live a decent life that I uh, wouldn't have a sin on me that would that would go to hell. And, I, and before I die, I'd like to have the last sacrament. But sometimes those things don't happen that way. If they put at rest on my headstone, they'd be lying, because I wouldn't be at rest with all these weeds around me. <laughs> they'd be lying. They'd like, just look, at rest. How can he be at rest with all them weeds around him? He's just there. He's not at rest. Ain't no way he can rest. <laughs> What would you say was Sales' greatest achievement? I suppose that from a standpoint of historical significance, you'd have to say that the fact that he is one of the members of the Jones Collins Astoria 8 that recorded the first racially mixed session in New Orleans uh, would have to be uh, the most celebrated. successful records. They were records that caught the fancy of uh, jazz followers all over the world, and uh, uh, they, they merely sold a lot of records and, in a sense, put the, the town on the map uh, for its period. happened to you now when you broke your hand or something lost a finger or something and you couldn't play <laughs> I would be a very thing. disappointed person I can tell you that I'd probably die before my time <laughs> over grief what would you do with yourself well I'd probably grieve myself to death now that is a good question I have tried to think of that myself uh, I think he'd walk himself crazy. He loves to walk, but I think with, uh, because sometimes he walks around the French Quarter, around the river, and 
I'm just hoping that he wouldn't have anything uh, outlandish, you know, in his mind, because that music is his life. But you see, there ain't nobody playing out of our type of music. Yeah. This uh -huh. old music you have been played for years, and this band here is together. You know, it's been you know, been for years. These are old musicians here. Yeah. You know, you know what the old lady told me? I was over in Harlem. She said, Mr. Thomas, they had got something missing that in band with boys was playing, you know. She said, they got something missing there. She knows something about music, you know. She, she, she said, look, they got something missing there. She knows. She said, there ain't no jazz. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And when I went to them boys, she said, nah, that's jazz. Oh, yeah. That old lady knows something about music, man. Yeah, she, she knew. They try to copy it, but when you copy something, that's commercial, and you have to play the way they want. Amateur. Yeah, so we playing from our heart. Down in old Joe's ballroom, on the corner by the square, they were serving drinks as usual, and that usual crowd was there. Now on my left stood Big Joe Buchanan. Eyes were bloodshot red. Yes, he put it to the folks all around him. And these were the very words he said. What he said, man? He said, I went down to that St. Jens infirmary. And I saw my baby there. She was stretched out on a long white marble table. So sweet, so cold, yet so bad. Let her go, let her go, may God bless her. Wherever she may be, she can search this wide world over. And she'll never find a sweet loving man like me. Yes, when I die, I want you to dress me. 